Okay, in Jesus' day, he had Pharisees and he had Sadducees. Okay? A Sadducee was like, he was like a cessationist. He was like a main minor, right? He didn't believe in the supernatural. A Sadducee didn't believe in the resurrection, didn't believe in angels, didn't believe in all that kind of stuff. You know what I mean? He would just go sit still down, stand, sit, stand, kneel. Check it. <laughs> but the Pharisee was very charismatic. Okay? Pharisees believed in the supernatural. They believed in angels, believed in the resurrection. They even had Pharisee exorcists going around casting demons out of this stuff. Or at least attempting to. Yeah. <laughs> It was the charismatics who nailed Jesus to the tree. Wow. That's something. Wow. Did you know we get way more persecution from prophets and super apostles than we do Baptists and Methodists? Did you know that? Wow. That's something. Wow. <laughs> don't rock the boat, don't rock the boat, baby. Rock the boat, don't rock the boat, baby. Rock the boat. Jews ask for a sign, Greeks look for philosophy, but we preach Christ. A stumbling block to the Jews. The Jews were doing everything they could to earn up in a couple extra drops of oil to work up the anointing, to get themselves holy, to make themselves right before God, to get the blessing. They knew there was a blessing, and so they were trying to climb their way into it. It's like Jacob. Jacob did not get the blessing because he wrestled for it. God humiliated him. You know what it says? He grabbed him in the hip. You know what it really means? Yeah. <laughs> When Jacob finally laid down and he said, I am going to give you and your descendants the land on which, not you're striving, but on which you're lying. Yeah. And you guys want to rest in what he's yeah. done. Tired of the struggles, tired of the climbing, tired of the pressing. How many of you guys are just ready to quit? Did you know faith quits? Faith, come on, means trust. The flavor of faith is not, brother, you got to believe, 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 press, believe, believe, believe. That's Bernie and Poppin' willpower. That's not faith. The flavor of faith is rest. Trust. Oh, yeah. Oh, it's out of control. Oh, it's all there. Oh, the shavings are going to be paid. Oh, the bills are going to be paid. Oh, the kids are going to get better. Oh, it's going to be okay. The marriage is going to be all right. Oh, it's going to be okay. Turn your neighbor and say, it's going to be okay. Yeah. Faith is not a willpower. If effort is involved, it is not faith. Faith does work, but it's faith itself that works. It's not you. Faith, the flavor of faith is quitting. It's giving up. It's you stopping your attempts. And trusting what he's done. Amen? Yeah. Alright, is that okay? Is that alright? Yeah. So, to the Jew, this is a stumbling block. Everything they've done to make everything right, to get a little bit more glory, to access the heavens a little bit more, it was counted null and void. Christianity is not a new form of religion. Christianity is the utter announcement of the end of religion. That you cannot climb yourselves into heaven. You can't do jack diddly squats. You may as well throw up the white flag right now. And it is stupidity for the Greeks. But to the elect, Christ, the power of God, and the wisdom of God, God's, quote, stupid cross reveals a greater wisdom than that of men and his weakness a greater strength than theirs. Amen? Yeah. Oh my goodness. Just wrap your head around the hand around some, or head, wrap your head around somebody. <laughs> wrap your arm around somebody's head. Just get, just put somebody in some kind of cattle squeeze. Just get them like in a cattle squeeze. Oh, a cattle and then we're just going to administer some medication. 
here. Thank you, Lord, for that wine of wisdom. There is a wisdom. There's a wine of wisdom that God wants us to have. And for somehow, somehow we think that wisdom, that wisdom was striving to please God. And in reality, that is foolishness. It's foolish to try to please God. <laughs> our biggest problem in the church is not our man pleasing. The biggest problem in the church is our God pleasing. How many guys want to be delivered from God pleasing? I'm tired of God pleasing. Just want to be absolutely delivered from God pleasing. Paul said, I, I you know, we, we, we tried to well, work up my head off to try to please God. He said in Galatians chapter 2. And he said it was all pointless. And so I gave up. I quit. They quit. I stopped. I stopped trying to please God. I trust it that he is pleased in his son. You see? Oh my goodness. Shake like a bone. Shake like a bone. So what I want to do, I want to set some of you guys free this afternoon. If you've been uh, caught up in some God-pleasing, uh, we'll just have a little deliverance session. Okay? <laughs> We're going to have some deliverance. Colossians right? chapter 2. Verse 16, the Jamie Phillips translation. He says, in view of these tremendous facts, don't let anyone worry you by criticizing what you eat or drink or what holy days you ought to observe or bothering you over new moons or Sabbaths or whatever the latest charismatic trend is. It's going to get you a couple notches more on your belt. It's going to get you better box seats. Okay? Don't be bothered. Say, I'm not going to be bothered, man. <laughs> All of these things have at most only a symbolical value. The solid fact is Christ. Yeah. Nor let any man cheat you of your joy in Christ. Nobody would do that, would they? Cheat you of my joy in Christ? No. Especially not a Christian. Right? Never. <laughs> How would they do that? By persuading you to make yourselves, quote, humble. <laughs> and fall down and worship angels. See, brother, you better not talk about angels. <laughs> if you talk about angels, somebody's going to worship them. This, this passage is not even about the talk of worshiping angels. Did you know that? People are afraid to talk about angels. They're afraid you're going to worship them. You're more prone to worship, you know, Jack Black and Britney Spears than you are angel. Jack Black. In our Western mindset, we have more of a more of a propensity to disbelieve they exist than to worship them. Okay. This passage is not even about angel worship. This passage is about bad charismatic speakers. Because everywhere Paul went, he preached this radical gospel of grace that Jesus did everything. That he cleaned up every last speck, every last drop of sin. We're not making light of sin. We just believe that Jesus sucked up every drop of it on his broken servant body. And it pleased the Lord to bruise his son. And we believe that he reconciled you. And that he took the curse. He broke the curse. Not just breaking your little curses one by one as you apply your blood of Jesus' magic wand. He broke the curse. He ripped you out of darkness, brought you into the glorious light. You're a new creation. You're in a whole new world. You are not a mixture. You are not a schizo. You're an altogether a new creation in a whole new world. All together new, all together lovely. There is no flaw in you. You are perfect. You are so holy. You are so beautiful. All together lovely. There's nothing more he can do. Nothing you can do to add to it. The law is an add-on. Imagination 
is pushing his way into matters he knows nothing about. Oh my goodness. And it is cleverness for getting the head. It is from the head alone that the body, by natural channels, is nourished and built up and grows according to God's laws of growth. So if then, through your faith in Christ, you are dead, turn to your neighbor say, you're dead. I know that these regulations look wise with their self-inspired efforts at worship, or what King James calls will worship, willpower worship. with a radical fire of grace on their 